Hey, this is Didi from Overkill, and you're listening to HardRockHaven.net. Here we are with the uh, uh, the one and only Dee Dee Verney from no. Thrash Legends Overkill. Thanks so much for talking to us here at Hard no. Rock Haven. Yeah, no problem. I'm whatever you need to get. Yeah, so... Uh, legend. We, we I'm a Thrash man. You're a legend. A legend. <laughs> a legend. That's what it says here. Okay. Uh, and I believe it. Um, <laughs> what have you been up to for the last two years? We all kind of lost two years. So uh, uh, what, what happened in the Overkill world, world of it last? I mean, probably the same as most everybody was doing. You know, we were like... We were on the road right when the whole COVID thing was hitting. Uh, we had to cancel a couple of shows from that tour and head home. And then we were, you know, hunkered down at home. I pulled all my kids back home and just watching the news, trying to be safe, you know, doing what everybody does. Um, and then smoke started to clear a little bit. And uh, I have a studio at my house. So I'm back and forth in the studio all the time, kind of working on things. and. Um, it was right at the end of our touring cycle for Wings of War, so we um, it wasn't that big a deal. We would be taking that time anyway to be writing and kind of hunkered in the studio and all that. So was doing that, kind of kept that going for a little while. And then um, as things started to loosen up, we started sharing files. Dave was doing some guitar tracks. Me and Jason were going back and forth. Uh, Blitz started getting to it, and we, then we kept moving it. It was like, oh, it's going to come out here, and then we moved it. It was going to come out here, and we moved it. Now it's moved again, so, but mostly that, just kind of staying at home, trying to be safe, working in the studio, you know. Like you said, like most everybody was Like doing. most everybody else, yeah, yeah. what are you going to do? Uh, so what, you mentioned the Wings of War, uh, it came out three years ago, but we you know, lost those years of touring, would you still consider this, you're on tour for supporting Wings of War? Um, I mean, it's our latest record, so it's like, I guess, kind of, but for the most part, we're this set is a little bit of everything. We're like, we haven't played in two years. People are just be happy to, yeah, yeah. that we go out and play. So we kind of pick more of just songs we like to play, not specific to our merch isn't specific to that. We're just kind of like, we've never done one like this before. Yeah. Actually, this is this whole little stint right here. This is the longest I've gone without doing a show probably since I'm 15. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, so uh, it's good to be out here doing shows again. I know um, you put out a big band. Uh, Last year. Right. Uh, so uh, where did that love of that kind of music come from? Is that just growing uh, up or was yeah, it stuff I, your folks listen to? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, my I come from a big Italian family. And so, you know, always with, you know, Dean Martin and my, my dad loved Sinatra and my uncle loved Tom Jones. And so all that kind of croonery, kind of big band stuff was always on. And um, kind of the old time rock and roll stuff, the... Um, you know, Bill Haley and Fats Domino, and I, I love that kind of shit too. So, again, we were COVID, we were home. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a bucket list thing for me. I'm like, yeah. one day I'm gonna do that, one day I'm gonna do that. So, this was an opportunity to, to get to it. So I'm like, okay, and uh, and it was fun. It was and yeah. a nice distraction too, to have like something different to kind of work on. and. So that, that was good too. I think a lot of people were doing that those two years, just like, oh, I finally got the time to do whatever, you know, like yeah. whatever that passion project was. Yeah. And I even had another kind of, I don't know what this other record is going to be, more more like a punk record that I did, me and Jason did, that's sitting there, that'll get done at oh. some point too. So I was busy doing a lot of stuff, but I know a lot of guys I talk to are just like, man, just like, I'm just not inspired. Just yeah. Like, everything sucks, you know, just can't. You know, and and I wasn't like I wasn't feeling like that. I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" You know, I'm in the studio. I'm fucking playing. You know, everything feels good. But then I kind of got it after a while. It took a while for yeah. it to kind of hit me. Like, oh man, this is a fucking drag. You know, so. Um, but now it's it's perfect timing for us to kind of get out here. We will do some playing. Uh, after this, we'll get back in the studio, kind of working on that record again. We'll all feel like, you know, we're doing this for a reason, not just yeah. to put it out, but to go play the shows and bring it out there. It's funny you mentioned that that you know it took you a while to get there because my wife she's an introvert loves it you know? yeah I don't have to see people this is a reason for me to put a mask on uh, my face to stay away from people uh, you know? I, I like, get uh, it you know I, I am the exact opposite and I, I can't wait to go back in the office I'm a weirdo uh, you know? now like, you see uh, that part that part was good to, to me I didn't mind I had the hat on glasses the yeah. mask I was like Darth Vader in the grocery <laughs> store and I'm like going walk right past neighbors I don't like they have no idea who I am I'm good with all that my life actually for a long time was not very different. Yeah. Worked in the studio, 
Um, I was here in the house. My kids were in the house working out of the house. My wife's a therapist. She was working Zoom meetings okay. and doing stuff. So for a long time, it wasn't that different. But then after a while, it's like it's a long time, you know. So. Uh, so uh, uh, a change on the stage tonight. Dave Vincent's now with yes. uh, that's uh, for personal reasons. Yep. But Phil Devil is stepping in, uh, obviously Machine Head fame. Right. Uh, how did you guys connect with him? I know Woods did that Metal Allegiance cover record stuff with him. But, yeah. Uh, I, well, I think that was the, was that, that, that was the main thing. Yeah. When when uh, when we knew Dave wasn't going to be able to do it, uh, we were kind of tossing around names. You know, who we think could fill in, who would be, and Blitz said, you know, I worked with this guy Phil on this record, and he said, I mean, I know Machine Head Records, I knew him for the Machine Head Records, I didn't know him personally. Yeah. Uh, and at this stage of our careers, if, uh, I don't care how good you are, if personally, you're a douche, I don't care. Uh, so Blitz said, oh no, he's a great guy, we had fun, so he came out, and it, I mean, it's been totally seamless. He knew all the songs, Great guy, he's been doing it a thousand years. Total it's pro. And it's a, it's a, we were talking about that in the car, just the, the musicianship to be able to learn that stuff so quickly. Yeah. Uh, I, and so he's done it with Slayer, he's done it with some other people. Yeah, it was just that with my God. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just so like, he, wild. Yeah, he's, he's good at that shit, and he's, a great, and he's a great guy. So he can fit right on the bus, fit right in, we all get along, not, no tension, no drama. Yeah. I, I can't. Too old for all that shit now, right? For sure, for sure. Uh, I was too old for that at 25, <laughs> 60. I'm especially fucking not tolerant. <laughs> so something that, that was kind of a downer in the metal world, uh, Johnny Zazula passed away. I know, obviously, uh, Overkill was on Beth Baker Force Records at one point. Yeah. Um, can you talk about uh, Johnny Z or early memories of him? Uh, uh, do you recall I, first meeting him or anything like that? Well, I actually spoke to Johnny just maybe two days before he died. Oh, uh, wow. I talked to him on the phone, so I knew he was I knew he was ill, uh, and I knew that uh, that he had been given not that long, so that he thought he had longer. Uh, but he, I guess we had been in Orlando maybe a year ago, and him and Marsha came down to the show. Uh, and Marsha died a little bit after that, and then uh, him and Marsha were so attached to him. I mean, they really were, you know, kind of like one of those things, you know, sometimes when um, when somebody dies, or a husband dies, or a wife dies, quickly, sometimes they, they seem like a couple like that, but, uh, I don't know, Johnny was a good guy, I remember he was from him back in the day, it was like when we first met him, it was me and Rat, our old drummer, going to the Rock and Roll Heaven flea market, bugging him, and listening to Metallica and Exodus demos, and uh, just keep bugging him, and bugging him, and bugging him. <laughs> So it was like, alright, I'll just fucking sign this fucking band. Um, and it was more Martian actually even than him. Um, but you know, Johnny Z was a character. He was, you know, he was, you know, you had to take the stuff that came out of his mouth sometimes with a grain of salt, because he was always like a hype man, you know. So this is the greatest thing that ever existed. And the next day, this is the greatest thing that ever. So uh, but a lot of passion, a good guy. That's you know? good. It's a shame. They don't make them like that anymore. No, no, they don't. No, him and Marshall, they're they were great people. So uh, vinyl has seen a return in, in, uh, in the music world. And, you know, people seem to be buying that more than ever, which is, as a physical media fan, I, I love that. Right. Um, why, why do you think, as a musician, uh, and, and, you know, been in the business for a long time, why do you think that is? Like, what is it about? I mean, I have no idea. Um, it would be like, you know, eight tracks coming back. I just. <laughs> Maybe because of, maybe because oh, stop it. Uh, maybe because of, it's, 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 well, I mean, it's just a seat. I, I, these, I mean, I get a little bit, um, even though I really don't. But it's probably, it's, great. it's, it's awesome. a, it's a yeah. collector's item. Yeah. I think, I mean, are there people who are buying vinyl, are they listening to it, like on a turntable? I don't know that they are. I think some are. Some, some are, yeah. yeah. But I think it's, it's just a cool piece of art. It opens up and try to make something special inside. And uh, I'm just happy to see it. You know, that, that's what I wanted to make when I was a kid. Not a CD. Yeah. Not a. I wanted to make a record. I did a thing when my kids were little. Uh, I was the dad who came in to talk about his job or something. You know, whatever it was. Yeah. So I came in and I said, I'm a musician and I play bass and I do this. And I pulled out the record. 
and I held it up to the kids, and these are young kids, eight, ten years old. I said, do you know what this is? The blank faces. One kid raises his hand and goes, is it a calendar? And I'm like, God. And I'm like, good guess. Yeah, good guess. Good right. guess. You eat forever. But I said, no, it is not a calendar. That's awesome. It's a record. What's a record? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, all right, this is. My kids eat boy clueless, and I have them all over the house. Yeah. Yep. I was looking at record players, he said, oh, you can play your CDs on that. like, no, no, that's not. <laughs> Put the needle on well, the yeah, CD. Yeah, just go do that, oh, see, how, great. see how that works. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned that there was some, uh, there was, so there was some writing towards the new Overkill record. Some, uh, yeah, I had. Like halfway there? Or, oh, yeah. no, it's, uh, it's the record's written. Oh, it's, uh, okay. all, all the drums are done, all the guitars are done. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, I still have to do the bass. Uh, Blitz has got to get to his vocals, but I had almost all of it written when we went out on the tour before wow. COVID because uh, that's where we were in our cycle you yeah. know so I had to have my part you know the music for the record pretty much done I had like two songs left that I had to do when I got back home because mm -hmm. um, that's where we needed to be because the record was supposed to come out in the fall of that year yeah. or whatever so but then we were like oh now we got a little extra time and then we had a little had more extra time and mm -hmm. you know it was it was funny because we Usually I'll kind of demo up everything at home, you know, all the songs, I'll send it out to the guys. Yeah. And then they'll learn the, the stuff from the demo, and then we get together and, and play, you know, and we, oh, maybe it should be faster or slower. Yeah, we, we kind of noodle around until it feels good in the room. Yeah. Um, but we weren't able to do that because of COVID, right? But now that it's taken so long, we could have done that. So I don't know exactly, this one's still going to be a bit of an odd record because it was kind of done all remotely. Yeah. Everything we never we're gonna put out a record of songs that we not one single time stood in a room and played together. That's so uh, I think it's really good. Yeah, well, hey, that's good. That's good. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I was gonna say it's a nice experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not all experiments are successful, but um, would you say it's on a, you know par with the musical style? I mean, Overkill's Overkill. Yeah, and and you guys definitely have. Um, I saw somewhere uh, that you were called the Motorhead of Thrash, and I think that's a, that's. Oh God, I'll take that all day long. <laughs> that's a spot <laughs> on description, but well, you know. Well, I saw one of the guys in Cannibal Corpse said somebody called us the Motorhead of Death Metal. I'm like, okay, well, and he was yeah. like, hell yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, I get that, you know that because Motorhead is, you know, it's, it's the benchmark. It's for mm -hmm. a band that's been around forever, doesn't give a fuck, stay true to their roots. I mean, yeah. so being compared to that is. You know, yeah. that's the greatest thing that could, there could be. But, I mean, compared to the other ones, it's hard to say. Um, I guess it kind of is. It's maybe got maybe a little bit more Sabbath-y kind of parts in it. Maybe a little, little more doomy. Um, I don't know. I know Colin uh, Richardson's going to mix it. Okay. Uh, we had that, and uh, poor Colin. We thought we were going to do it, and then we pushed them off. And then we pushed them off again, and we pushed them off again, and we said, you know what, we'll call you when we're ready. Um, so whenever that's going to be, we'll call him again. But we're psyched about that, because uh, he's just great. He's a great, uh, great mixer, great producer. So if nothing else, it'll sound great. This punk uh, album you said you did with Jason. Yeah. Uh, is it covers, or no, all, no. The new, all the new stuff? Yeah, I don't like doing covers that much. I know like a lot of the guys do. Pepper it in, or... Yeah, yeah. There's a few songs peppered in, but it's uh, again another like the like the big band record that I did. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of on my bucket list was I'm doing a punk rock record. One, I mean that's just in my wheelhouse to do. I said one day I'm just gonna hunker down and um, you know, and it's a full out, you know, a little bit of Ramones, a little bit of Sex Pistols, a little bit of Green Day, a little bit of you know, because that's more of the punk rock like yeah. I like, not the kind of hardcore GBH fear, not like that. More of that kind of sing song I mean we touch on a little bit with Overkill with Old School and yeah. Gordon yeah. State and, but you know not real heavy like I don't know we'll see when it's done <laughs> a title at all or any, any, no, any no, consideration no. for that or? I don't know if it's going to be um, like I did a solo record a little while ago whether it'll be a second solo record or we'll give it a different name or I don't know. I don't the know what's going to happen uh, with it right now. That big band record, I was impressed with your vocals. Like, I, I mean, I always hear it like the gang vocals. And you, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the yelling. You support Blitz, but you're like, wow. You know, well, I, I mean, crude. To, to me, <laughs> that, that kind of stuff is, you know, people think that um, that kind of singing is more difficult. And I don't think it is. I think what Blitz does, uh, maybe because I, it, 
And it's hard for me to do that. It's not human. Yeah, what, what he does, or, or really any of the kind of rock metal singers, is like, now that's fucking hard. But this is just singing in key with, you know, um, it's, it's, a lot of people have trouble with that, though. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, I, I guess. Well, I mean, it's a, it a lot of learning for me. You know, I, was, I never stood in a room with a horn section and background singers and uh, stand-up bass and all that. So that was a, it was a, you know, huge undertaking, but like just so much fun. Has, so it, always, much has fun. it always been bass for you? Has that always been the, the instrument that is it, we well, picked up in, first? Well, in, in the big band thing, I play guitar. Yeah. yeah, well, so, no, I just meant in general, like, like is that what, oh, where yeah. you got your start? Yeah, for sure. That was, I mean, for me, Gene Simmons played bass. I didn't care about the other instruments. It would be like, I'm playing what he's playing. That's awesome. And, you know, and then the same thing, all, all my heroes were bass players. Dee Dee Ramone, um, Geezer Butler, you know, Steve Harris, uh, all those guys. That's the, all I ever wanted to yeah. play was bass. Yeah. I mean, it's the it's the foundation. Well, yeah, but now it's like I never play bass at home. I always have always guitar. I mean, I never play bass at home, never. So that's probably true. I, mean, I think it's a little harder to write on a bass. Um, it's just a little more limiting than just a guitar. Even if you're just doing simple chord changes, yeah, uh, it's a little easier on a guitar. Well, we and we mentioned that that we're not far from where the El Rosa Villa uh, was located here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, could you talk a little bit about uh, any memories of playing there? Or Al Rosa, God, we've been going there forever, years and years and years. Um, but what we remember the family that used to run the place. They were great, and then they, they used to cook the food in the place. You know, so you always you knew if you went to Al Rosa that you were getting a good meal. They yeah. come out, it was like a mom and pa kind of thing. Um, had a lot of great shows there through the years. Actually, I we was just telling my dr bus driver that was, God, this is years ago. I uh, I always wanted to drive the bus, and I used to. Like the, uh, just hound the bus driver. It's like, come on, let me drive the bus. He's like, you're fucking nuts. Not when you drive the fucking bus. So at the Al Rosa one time, our hotel was not far. Everybody was gone. Everything was opened up and empty. Nobody was around. He's like, all right, fucking get up here. So I get up there, and he's like, we're not going far. He gets in his seat. He jumps over. He says, just got to ease it out. So I'm driving the bus for a little bit. And it's weird because, you know, you can't turn, like you're making a turn. Yeah. You kind of have to go past the intersection, and then you kind of like, it's like a fade. Yeah. And I'm looking out the back mirror, and that trailer is like, looks like a hundred yards behind you. It's going over the curb, <laughs> whatever. But I got to drive the bus a little bit. And, nice. you know, so he would walk back there while I was driving. You know, and everybody's like, oh, my God, who's, where's, why, who's driving the bus? And it's like, oh, not Bernie. Not <laughs> that was my, people, that was at the Al Rosa um, and then after, like we were saying before, after Dime was killed there, um, it felt weird going back. Yeah. Like it just, like, um, I know when they first called us, they said, I, I don't know if we want to play there. It just didn't feel right. But then, like I said, the family was so good to us, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they trying to make a living too, yeah. so we're trying to help out. Uh, but now it's gone. You know, we're you moving guys. on to... New places, and this place seems pretty good. Although maybe you get a picture of that later on. It's like, what the fuck is that? There's a lot of fucking <laughs> I, rules here. Does but, it, uh, guy Blitz understand rock that. bands coming here? Let's mention that on the way over. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. not for nothing. Rock <laughs> bands don't usually like a long list don't of like rules. rules. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's a really nice venue. I have to yeah. say, good PA, good it stage, is. and the kids in Columbus. I'm great. short, so I love the stage because it's you can actually see shit. Well, yeah, that's true, so, too. Yeah. Is Newport Music Hall still around? It is. Yeah. Uh, sure is. We had is. a lot of nice shows. We had a lot of fun shows there, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a historic place, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, We've out, you know, Aurora before that. It was, yeah, I mean, all these, I mean, places, it's funny that, you know, we've outlasted almost every venue, almost every record label, almost every promoter, uh, but there's still a few to go to, like Detroit, in a couple of days, we're playing Harpo's, fucking Harpo's. Uh, Oh my God! It's like I can't even believe it's still there. I played there on, like, taking over with Megadeth, wow. um, and there's you know there's a handful of those kinds of clubs that were, been there, not many. There's not yeah, many, true. but like ones that I can remember that were there since like the first shows, first tour I was ever on, uh, that still exist. And they're I, I guess they're fun to go back to sometimes, but it's a little weird. I was gonna say, do you get nostalgic, or you're like, oh, I remember. You know. It depends. We were just at this place in Poughkeepsie called The Chance that's been there since I was, I don't even know how long, but we haven't been there in a lot of years. Mm -hmm. So we, and I walked in, 
I mean, it, not one fucking thing has changed. <laughs> not one, not updated toilets, not, not updated pe nothing. Awesome. It's like, you walk through the door, it's 19 fucking 86. Um, but it was, you know, it was a, the, the kids were great, still a fun show, you know, and as long as they keep the gear up to yeah. snuff or whatever, you know, enough to, you can do your show and, and put on the right thing. Um, there's a place called Toads in, in New Haven we haven't been to since, I think it's right across the street from Yale that we haven't been to and again, just like probably 20 years, something wow. like that. And going back to that, I'm curious if there's any any changes for that. Uh, Harpo's, I don't know if there'll be any changes there, I but that. I doubt it too. <laughs> Have you been to Harpo's? It's been, it's been a long time, but yeah. Yep. Yeah, that is... It's a place. It's a it's place. A place. <laughs> Shows out that. It's I like that. Yeah, it's a place. <laughs> Well, Dee Dee, uh, I told you, I'm a little rusty. It's been a couple years. Oh, is there anything you'd, like to, uh, anything you'd like to close with or share with uh, the Overkill world, what we can expect? No, I, I mean, uh, right now we're, you know, we're going to finish up this tour. Then we're supposed to be, um, there's some stuff in Europe uh, we're supposed to be doing in May. Uh, we have a festival with Accept, and we're doing a couple shows in Ireland and Belfast. And then we're on a little cruise. Oh. Um, and I'm like, can we go on a cruise? With COVID, and uh, I don't even know what the COVID fuck. COVID went away. Yeah, Russia <laughs> invaded Ukraine. It's uh, all COVID's gone. all gone it's now. All gone. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're supposed to be doing that, and then we have some more festivals later in the year, um, in August, and one of them is in Bucharest, which I think is Romania, which is over kind of yeah. over there. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, is that happening? You're gonna put a festival with forty thousand metalheads like that close to everything? Is that happening? I don't know, uh, but maybe somebody will tell us. But we have some plans. Hopefully, the things will be open up. We're supposed to do a show in Mexico. Starting to kind of get back into it. And then I guess our plan probably will have a new record either towards the end of the year or beginning of 23. And then uh, hopefully back on the road again. Awesome. A lot to look forward to. Yeah. Well, Dee Dee, been a pleasure again. You bet. Thanks so much. All right. Hey, this is Dee Dee from Overkill, and you're listening to Hard Rock Haven. Dot net. Perfect. Or maybe something with cock in it. <laughs> <laughs>